that we're going to be talking about tonight is the church at midnight. The church at midnight. If there's ever a time that we can say we are in a midnight time, it is right now. After this pandemic, after we have racial tensions on the rise, after we have seen people still killing one another uh, uh, egregiously for no reason over stupid, trivial things, as we are seeing right now, even in the church, various things, pastors fall on the left, on the right, those who we thought were supposed great men of righteousness and of standard and of quality are falling down and being exposed as charlatans. Oh, I mean, we have seen many things this past year. We've seen much death this past year, as Brother Donovan has just said. So it seems like in the midst of all of this, and yet what is the call of the church? What is it more so for us to do? What can I do? What can you do? What is it right now? It seems though as though uh, there's been just such darkness all around us. And it's like, Lord, it's getting harder to be a light. It's getting harder to shine a light into a dark place. So right now we are in what I would say the midnight time. And I want you to think about Paul here in Silas. When it first starts out in verse 16, it says, And it came to pass as he went to prayer that a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us with much gain, her masters, much soothsaying. So this woman is one who is demonically possessed. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a familiar portion of scripture. We all probably have heard this before in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But I want to bring out some things that are very pivotal. So she's got a spirit of divination, and she's operating in this spirit. And she follows Paul and Silas, it says, for many days, crying out, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. What she said is right, but the spirit was wrong. What she said was right, the spirit was wrong. One of the things of this midnight hour is that there's been some of us that possibly have sat under ministries where the pastor or the church or the leadership is saying the right things, but the spirit is not right. We are sitting under teaching where it sounds like it's right, but the spirit behind it is twisting the scripture to mean something else. And it's in a way taking away the strength of the believer. And I'm trying to encourage you tonight because I believe that you have been in some of these places where you have left a little bit confused, where you might have heard some of this word and then all of a sudden you are left in a place like, Lord, I, I, I felt this way about the scripture, but now I'm not so sure. And it's like they're trying to undermine the solid foundation that is laid in Christ Jesus. He says then that this went on for many days and Paul was grieved. He was grieved in his spirit. One of the things that is being propagated in this midnight hour is for the sake of love. We know that God is love, but they're twisting the word love to mean we don't offend anyone. We don't challenge anyone. We just take everyone as they are and just love on them. Right now, They've been trying to produce that more and more, as uh, you probably heard in the news a few months back, uh, they were trying to pass this Equality Act. And it's, I haven't heard too much of it since then because it, it kind of failed in the Senate. It hasn't gone much further as, as to my knowledge, but they were trying to pass this Equality Act law to where they would uh, allow for the LGBTQ to gain much more of a foothold where others would be totally Churches would be totally at their mercy, meaning that they could not stop. Uh, they could not say we're a church and our leadership is only going to stand for righteousness. We can't allow you in here. No, they would have to then start to allow LGBTQ members to infiltrate the churches and to serve. And it, it would just be terrible. So continue to pray about that. But we see right now, Paul said this is going on many days and it's grieving his spirit. How many of you have left church when you're supposed to leave the house of God encouraged and built up in the faith and so, so, so set on fire and on inspired because you've been in God's presence, but you leave church and you're frustrated. You leave church and you're angry. You leave church and you feel like you wasted your time. You feel you leave church and you didn't get fed today. How many of us have gone through these things? You're grieved in your spirit. 
Grieved. And he says here that Paul was grieved in his spirit. And finally, he rose up and turned to this young lady and said, commanded that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And it came out the self-same hour. And then the masters now, they can't make their money anymore. Their source of income has been disrupted. And now Paul and Silas have been brought before the magistrates. And as they are brought before the magistrates in verse 21, it says, they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, nor for us to observe being Romans. The word of God does not agree with this culture. The word of God does not agree with what the world is doing right now. The word of God stands by itself. It does not bend to the culture. It does not bend to the LGBTQ agenda. Guess what? This has been going on for a long time, and the word of God sustained during Sodom and Gomorrah. It will still stand today. Homosexuality is not. I don't care how they try to propagate it. That lifestyle is not pleasing to God. I don't care how they try to dress it up. It is not pleasing to God. You can say that two men are loving each other. Two women are loving each other. See, it's a loving relationship. No, I don't care what you say. You can try to dress it up all you want to. God says sin is sin. So, uh, so our society will be trying to push the LGBTQ. The, we see more sexual promiscuity being perpetrated. We see more racism and hatred of different races and cultures being perpetrated. We see occult practices on the rise being perpetrated, witchcraft and sorcery. We see uh, conspiracy theories flooding our, 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 eye gate, our eye gates and things on the web. But I tell you this, that the word of God does not bend to this culture. It didn't bend to these magistrates. And they know this. That's why they want to push it out. That's why they want to undermine it. That's why they want to try to get rid of it, sweep it under the rug, because it's an offense to them. And he says in verse 22, and the multitude rose up together against them. The magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. They ripped off Paul and Silas's clothes and told them to be beaten, had them beaten. I want to submit to you that this is the afflictions of the righteous. In this hour, this is the afflictions. This is the pain that the many of the body of Christ are feigning. Have you felt like you've been afflicted lately? Have you feel like you are alone, that you, as though you've been isolated? You don't feel the strength of the corporate body as you once did. It seems, Lord, that there's a separating and a shifting happening. It seems like that right now for the true believer, that uh, we have people that right now who are leaving churches because they're not being fed. We have people right now who are standing for the word of God and those people are seen as unloving. We see we have people who stand for truth and they're seeming to be unfulfilled. They're walking in the power. Uh, they're not walking in the power and, and they're, they seem to be at a standstill. And, and, and all of this is happening. All of this is happening at this midnight hour. But on top of that, these men, Holy men of God were stripped of their clothing. The world is working to do its best to strip the believer of their faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is our clothing. In Romans uh, 13, 14, it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus. But the world is doing everything to disrobe us of Jesus Christ. It's doing everything it can to try to get us off of Christ and off of the word of God because it knows on Christ the solid rock we stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. It will undermine, if they can get us off of here, it will totally disrupt, totally disrupt. But we know we have a sure foundation, so we have to stand strong. So he says, and they rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And I, the reason why I also brought this up is because I had a dream uh, the other week. And in my dream, I saw this man. He was a pastor. And it seemed like many people were coming around him. I never, uh, this is not a, a real man that I know. I don't know this man, but it just seemed like the Lord was showing me something. And this pastor was gaining notoriety and people were coming around him or beginning to support him. And it looked like he was doing some great things and was looking good. But then all of a sudden he started to change and he started to turn away from uh, what he was professing. And he had a wife, he was married. And, and all of a sudden I come to his house and then 
I see the pastor there. I came to talk to him about something. And his wife welcomed me into the house and said, hold on. She would get her husband for me. But while she went to get him and then she comes back and we're sitting talking and waiting, this other woman, she was big and she was uh, very, very, very stocky. And she was very dark skinned. She comes up to the wife and just starts pummeling her, just starts beating her punching her in the face, literally. And I stood there in shock for a minute. And then finally I had to rise up and get her off this lady and started binding things up and cast her off and got her out of the house. And then I had to chide against the husband because he was allowing this. And I believe many, pa what, it, what the Lord was showing me is that many pastors have been disrobing the people of God and they've been allowing the true servants of God to be beaten. We've been allowing the, the, the true bride of Christ to go harmed and afflicted and have not been standing up for them and trying to protect them. But instead we made them out to be outlaws. And so Paul and Silas here, now they've been beaten, disrobed, exposed. And I feel like one of the other things that is happening right now in this midnight crisis is that the garments that have been covering the church, the garments that Christ has put there, it seems like people are trying to tear garments off and we see more exposing of the church. And I'm all for exposing where there is falsehood and, and putting truth. But it seems like there's more exposing that is doing, I think, harm to the body of Christ. Making mockery of the church, making mockery of the things of God, making mockery of holiness and righteousness. So then he says in verse um, 23, when they had laid many stripes, this is not just a small beating. This is says many stripes. They beat them in the old days, almost to an inch of their life. If a person got 39 lashes, they, no one got 40 because 40 lashes was supposed to kill you. If you got 39 lashes, that means they beat you to an inch of your life. Okay, so it says they were beaten with many stripes and they survived that beating. Many of you are still surviving. Many of you are still holding strong. Sometimes you, you are feeling like, Lord, I can't take much more of what I'm going through. See, I don't want to just talk about the church at large. I want to talk to you. Some of you are feeling like, Lord, I can't take much more of what I'm going through. But I'm telling you now, you have been whipped with many stripes but the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all you will come through on the other side your time of affliction is soon to come to an end but one of the other things about this now they received the charge and they were thrust into the innermost part of the prison and their feet were made fast in the stocks. That means they could not move. They were in prison, in a jail cell, but now they were chained up in such a way they cannot move. Some of you might be feeling, Lord, I'm at a standstill. I'm in the midst of all this chaos around me and I'm standing still. I cannot go forward. I feel, Lord, like I'm powerless. I feel, Lord, like I'm helpless. I feel, Lord, that I've been isolated and so chained up. I'm so bound up inside of my heart, inside of my spirit. I can't do anything, God. But there's an inner cry in your heart saying, God, if you would give me strength, God, if you would endow me with power, God, if you would lead me and guide me and show me what you would have me to do. But the church at large has done ourselves a disservice. We've gotten accustomed to just our small gatherings in worship. You know, we have a lot of great singers in the church today. And I, I'm not knocking worship, so please don't think that. But what I'm saying is we find that more Christians will gather for worship and we just want to stay there. We want to stay in that place of worship and not worry about going out there and saving the lost and giving the gospel. We've grown accustomed. See, what we have done is we're still in the upper room. We're still in the upper room, but yet it's midnight. We're still there wanting to stay here and let's just pray. Let's just pray a little harder. Let's, let's, let's just worship. Let's just worship a little longer. 
When God is saying it's time to get out of the upper room, you see, with the pandemic now, I believe that God is still trying to get the church out of the four walls. People are trying to get back inside and I, I, amen to that. That's a good thing, but still don't get accustomed to the four walls. There's people still who need to hear. This is exposed things. People are frustrated. People have had the world turned upside down. People have lost loved ones. People don't know what to do. They say about the vaccines and that hopefully it, uh, everything will get back to normal from it. But just as soon as people are getting vaccinated, they're talking about other strands. They're talking about we're probably going to have to give vaccines on an ongoing basis because they don't have it all together. But what I'm saying to you is that as people are looking for salvation in vaccines, they're looking for salvation in government. But I want them to start looking for salvation at you and at me and at all of us because we have the, we have the secret. We have Jesus Christ. We have the answer. And they need to see it. So what I want to submit to you is what it says in James 2.17. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You can say that you have faith, but if we don't have any works to back up what we profess, we've got to have something to show for it, men and women of God. We've got to have something to show for all that we say we believe. But then it says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. You see at midnight, the world needs to see us. Not just praising and praying on Sunday morning in a church service. They need to see us praising and praying in the workplace. They need to see us praying and praising in the marketplace. They need to see us praying and praising in front of our home. They need to see us praising and praying with our children when we get ready to go out for school. They need to see us outside praying over our spouses. My wife prays over me every morning before I leave my house. She stands right outside that door and she stretches her hands uh, before me as I step out of that car. And get and drive off. She does it every morning. I pray with my family every morning and my children every morning before I leave home. And others need to see it. It also says here. Hey, brother Alex, can you just hit your mute button? Hit your mute button. Thank you, sir. I'm almost done, ladies and gentlemen. And then I'm gonna open it up. He also says here that at midnight, like I said, which is the time we're living in, I want you to think about also, this was not the only time someone was beaten for the gospel, for stepping out. We know that Peter and John in Acts chapter uh, 5, verses 17 through 42, you can read it on, on, on your own time. But they stood out, they stepped out, and they found themselves in the prison. But God released them from prison. He sent an angel to, relive, to deliver them from their prison. And I'm saying God is ready to deliver some of us from some of the prisons we've been in. Some of us have been in mental prisons of despair with all of this. Some of us have been in uh, uh, prisons of confusion over the past few months. But God is ready to deliver and bring us out. He also says here that at midnight, they sang praises and the prisoners heard them. There's others in prison. There's others in the prison. Notice that as they served God, this is why it's so important for people to see you serving God and to serve him boldly because there's others in prison. And as they served him boldly, then the prisons were shaken. Then the, the chains fell off. Then their bands were loose, but not just their bands, but everyone around them. There's people connected to you. There's people around who are connected to you. And if you begin to get bold for Christ, if you begin to step out in faith, you will begin to see some things shaken. So what is, what is the point of all this, Brother Tim? What are, what are you really saying? Well, number one, Joshua chapter one, verse nine says, be strong and of good courage for the Lord thy God is with you whithersoever you go. 
Many of us need to be reminded of that. That God is with me wherever, so ever I go. God is with me. I want you for a minute. When you get into God's presence, what do you what do you think about? Now, I'm, I'm not talking about um, um, tell me Holy Ghost. I'm talking about I'm kind of talking about visualizing in, in your spirit when when you close your eyes and you're praying. What do you what do you where 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 is your mind at? What are you seeing? What are you thinking? One of the things I try to think about, I try to think about myself before the temple. And I want to imagine God standing right there in all of his awesomeness, all of his power. The one who created the stars and the sky and the, and the, and the earth beneath and set the seas and gave them more, their borders and their coasts. He's with me. And if he's with me, he's the majority. And I don't need to be afraid of anyone. When he says, be strong and good courage, be not dismayed nor afraid. That's a command. He's telling me not to be afraid. And guess what? If I'm still a little shaky, I need to shake it off. Let God shake it off. Begin to find your bearings and tell yourself, I will not fear. I will not be afraid. Because we're, we don't want to let anyone steal our crown. See, some of the old people used to preach that way. Don't let anyone steal your crown. Get out there and share the faith. Don't let someone else steal your crown. When I get to heaven, I want to have a crown to lay at Jesus' feet for bringing souls to the kingdom. I don't want to get to heaven empty as a pauper and have nothing to lay at my master's feet. He also says here, something that Jesus reminds us of in this crisis hour. From Matthew 24, verses 36 through 51, Jesus is saying, look up. Because the thief, Jesus Christ is going to come back like a thief in the night. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. And we're hurtling sooner and sooner to the end. Things, I believe, are being put into place that are setting up the stage for the end time. The end of all things is coming. It seems more and more like peace is being taken from the earth. So we can't just think about ourselves anymore. We can't just think about our stability anymore, even though those things do have place. But we need to be thinking more eternally minded. Eternally minded at midnight. But we also have to be vigilant, brothers and sisters. Pray for opportunities for God to give you to share the faith. Pray God send people whose hearts are ready to receive. Don't take for granted any opportunity. The enemy is going to try to trick you. He's going to try to tell you that person doesn't need to hear it. He's going to try to tell you that person doesn't want it, doesn't want any, that don't, don't waste your time. But I'm telling you, you don't know, you don't know who's depending on the word that you have in your mouth. You know? So I want you to look up, beloved of God, for Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon, and he's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He's coming soon. You see, like I said, some of us have had our garments torn. We've been disrobed, been made a spectacle of, put to shame. Some of us seems like we've had our strength stolen from us. Some of us feel like we're not what we used to be. I was stronger in the faith and then. Maybe some situation happened and it caused you to doubt. And now you're, you're flooded with doubt and fear and unbelief. But I'm telling you that the Lord God is with you. And he wants to restore your strength. He wants to restore your garments. He wants to give you back the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness you're dealing with. He wants to make things right in your life. Because the hour is late. And he needs a body. He needs an individual who's going to serve him to be seen in this wicked world in these times. So, beloved, God bless you. Uh, I try to keep it short. Um, I want to be able to open this up for comments and let others be able to share what God has laid on your heart. I turn it back over to you, Brother Don. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you, thank you. Um, still feel like you 
you had another wave in you, you could have gone for another 10, 15 minutes, you know, <laughs> keep us stirred up. But anyway, we thank God for, for what you, uh, you delivered. And as, uh, as Brother Tim says, um, let's, let's open it up now and um, hear what's in your heart, what, what's the, um, what, um, what if anything you have received from tonight and what the spirit is, or as you know, downloading your spirit concerning the, um, this particular subject and the, and, the, and the times that we are living in and the times we are faced with, you know, right at, towards the end of when Brother Tim mentioned, you know, that Christ says he's coming back for a church without spots. What does that mean to you? You know, I often consider that myself, you know, and it, it always leads me to ask the question, Lord, am I in? You know, Paul spoke with a, with, with a, with a boldness there as he, um, he spoke to, to Timothy. Run the race, finish my course, he said. You know, henceforth there is laid up for me. Confidence, he spoke, you know, a crown. And it's not just me, he said, but all those, you know, who love his appearing. So how con confident am I? How confident are you? You know, and it being midnight hour in the church, um, how, how confident are you? Um, heard someone said to me just today that, um, you know, it, it is time for the believer to be certain of where they're going. You know, it, it is high time the believer be, be, be certain, be confident about their, um, their, 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 their destination when they depart. Because, you know, not that folks haven't been dying over the years, but I mean, we, we, we've seen what happened over the last year and, and continues to happen, you know? And we, we have no, seem to still have no, 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 no control over, over any of this. We, we gotta be ready. And, and what the person was trying to say to me that we have to stay in a state of readiness. This, this, this time we're living in demands that, that you and I be in a state of readiness because it's at any time. That flight, that flight leaves at any time. We don't control it. You know, anyway, um, let's, let's, let's open it up. Let's open it up. What, what, what is it that um, you have in your thoughts, in your mind, what, um, what you've gathered, what the Spirit is saying to you, anyone? Brother uh, Tim, um, Brother Donovan, um, it was right on time, Brother Tim, your message about the church. So many of us and church members uh, are looking for God. And he's putting all these things in front of us. You mentioned that he's coming back soon. So he's giving us this warning. Everything is happening. Ball of confusion now. The church, but actually we're talking about each individual. But yes, the church as a whole collectively. And he wants us to return to him. He wants us to stop praising him and then he would show up in us to be looking for we want we want something visible to see and if we stop praising him then he'll be in us and we can start doing the things that he have charged us to do yes he's coming back soon but these things is not just heaven's stance all of this chaos and all the killing. And we talk about the church, these big mega churches and all these uh, pastors and all this. Who are they? We don't seem to know right from wrong anymore. The church seems to agree with all of the, the, the foolishness. The church, 
Nobody wants to accept their responsibility. And he's putting everything in front of us, all type of obstacles, all kinds of, in our past. So we can return back to him. So we can start praising him. And then he will show up in us, in each individual. Yes, people talk about going back to the church, the building church. But we need to start doing what we've been doing every day on the real man call. The pastor, we have to start preaching his word because the people are hungry. And when you start telling the truth and speaking his word, then the church will come back together because that's what it's all boiled down to each individual separate person, but collectively the church. And we need to start praising the Lord because what you were saying, Brother Tim, is, is just spot on. We have to be accountable. Each one of us, what are we doing to lift a brother through hard times, burden times, so we can hold back that, that flood of fear, that flood of anxiety, to lift our brother so we can come back together as one and praising the Lord, giving him credit, because it's no answer to what's going on in the world because the world don't hear us. Hmm. Hmm. They ain't thinking about the world. They ain't thinking about the Lord. They are thinking about money, prestige, and how they can get over. It don't matter, trickery. You know, the old slickster, they ain't just started this, 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 ventriloquist talking and you think it one thing and it's, it ain't we got to get back to the truth the word of lord and if i may add and close brother them we have to put on that what the arm um, of god what is that his word so we can be withstand what's going on this is not going to be easy it's some most stuff coming as you alluded to it's a lot of things happening. We have to open our eyes and see what's happening and grasp our brothers and sisters who are beaten down so we can have some courageous. We don't have any more courage and no more courageous men to step up to the plate and make sacrifices sometimes for a cause because everybody's worrying about, well, I don't want to lose my job. Uh, it's right on, Brother Tim. I, I don't want to go take take over, but man, we have to get back to that word to one another and speak the truth. And that's the only way the church collectively is going to come back. We don't care about the building anymore. The Lord is saying, hey, my people, he say, my people will hear my voice. My people will know my voice. These big mega church, they ain't talking about the word of God. They ain't talking about Jesus. They're talking about God and everybody else. But we can't get to the Father but through Christ Jesus. His precepts, his principles, and his teaching. And that's what we need to be back all about, praising him my comment. Thank you, Brother Jim. Amen. I see Brother Creighton, you, you, your mic is yeah, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad I, oh, wait a minute. I'm glad I stayed up, you know, it's my brother there. All of y'all are. But um, I have a lot to say, but I'm going to just touch on a few things. Um, one, where Tim, I, I just thank you for what you spoke because you hit home so much, uh, especially in the part where you leave the church in a certain state of mind. And I'm talking about being a part of a church. I'm up here in New York. You guys are down in Florida. And I was a part of a church where this was one of the top speakers in the world. 
and his leaders didn't even know where Psalms 23 was in the Bible. What? You know, and you don't want me to see, I'm trying to be nice tonight. I'm trying to be nice tonight. And the attitude that was there, and they were more about raising up that person's name than the name of Jesus. And me and my friend Chris used to always say, but he didn't go to the cross. This uh, person, I locked the door. I'm sorry. My wife was going to the hospital for her mother. Um, you know, he, this guy didn't go to the cross. Christ went to the cross. Um, another thing that you touched on about praising, I was in the laundry Thursday. And like I always do, I go down there with my Bible. And in the midst of that, I always start singing. And in the midst of singing, this woman comes over to me. Oh my God, I love that song. And, you know, just, it, it just showed me, it goes back to what Brother Henry said. We need to get outside these four walls and do what he's called us to do. But this is the biggest part I want to speak on about the confidence that these men had in God. And it's something God showed me. You know, um, I'm not here to say this in a bad way, but I'm high risk, heart attack, asthma, diabetes, I don't claim. But the whole point was, was God started stirring up my spirit, showing me Isaiah 6 and 8 and Matthews 5 and 9. And I would sit here and argue with God. But to make a long story short, you know, I would go out for my walk in the morning and I was going away from the people where I live. And God said, no, I want you to go this way. And by going the other way was where they had the COVID tent set up, where a lot of the people were shopping at. And my wife was like, where you been for the last three or four hours? And the confidence that I had in the Lord that I never, and this makes almost a year now that I haven't even come close to having the COVID and I'm, I'm, I'm not here to brag about it, but it's just that that boldness that he put in me to go out here because we may be the only Bible that some of these people see and the people who I was running into were state troopers, just people all over, you know, years ago when I first moved to where I live, I would never see homeless people. And every so often you had drips and drabs of it up here. But um, to say that, to say what I'm saying is just to have confidence in the Lord and just let us go out here and do what he's called us to do. And I want to end on this note, just as, you know, Elizabeth encouraged um, Mary and, and Aaron and her encouraged Moses and, you know, um, Paul encouraged that's what we need to be doing, you know, and we need to get, of, get out of ourself. If we're in self right now, we need to get out of self and be from there for that next person, but even be there more so for those who don't know Christ. Because like I said, you know, we may be the only Bible, you know, that, you know, some of these people see, you know, like you were talking about that equality thing. I'm, I'm so glad it didn't pass. but would that have stopped us? You know, are we going to have confidence like these men of God did to, to the death? Are we going to get to that point where we don't care what they do to us? You know, and I'm saying this jokingly, but I'm very serious. I'm a little crazy. So, hey, you know, it says to be absent with the you Lord. Know I'll be in a better place. You know, they're going to do that to me. Do it. Hmm. You know, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. You know. But some of our, my friends get mad at me how I say certain things sometimes because I, I, I'll say, you know, certain things, you know, not a derogatory or present, but I'll go there in the sense of, you know, but the devil has no power here. Yeah, but Crane, you got to be careful. You know, yeah, right. Hmm. Who, you know, be, let's be serious. There's nothing he can do to me. We have the victory. And it says it. We're in the book of Romans right now. I think it's a few weeks ago. We are more than conquerors. More. And I can start quoting other scriptures, but it's not about even quoting the scriptures. You know? 
I'm at this point, you know, if, if, if we got to do what we got to do, you know, and it's not about us, but it's unto the glory of God. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop. Man, you were on the road, man. Why you stop? You know, because nah, I don't want to take, I want to hear other, you know, like yeah, brothers, yeah, yeah. we don't want to take up the whole you. thing, you know? Yeah. I'm messing with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Brother Barry. Uh, Pastor Barry, welcome, welcome, you know? Um, yes, yes. Uh, I, I heard just this week, I was listening to this, this, this person, they were saying that up north that would encompass with, with you guys in New York and, and beyond that many churches that were closed over a year now are beginning to open. And the question that person asks is something that I asked even of myself and my church almost a year ago. When these doors are open, folks are gonna go back into the way they left, you know? And um, regrettably, I seen the same thing at my church. I was so upset. And when we went back into the building, we, we had the same old habits, the, 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 the same old dirty ways, this, this, the same old, you know, so, we, we took, the, we went right back in there with the same mess. After all that we saw, all that was happening. And, um, he, he was, he, po he posted that question. And that, that fits right in there with, with, with what Brother Tim spoke. And it's midnight. But is it, is the church realize it? Are they, are, are, are we fully aware what, what time it is, you know? Because for, um, in, in a lot of cases, it's as if we're not, you know, one, one person spoke on the fact that say, say for even those many pastors and, 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 and prophets and all that, that made run amok last year, as, as, as what's his name would, would say, you know, um, but, but made a mess of things last year. They didn't lose anything. None, none of them, say, if you, say, if you look at their, their numbers, and um and what they what they used to have after saying all those things and and seeing that that stuff fall flat in his face people are still flocking to them in large numbers why is that why is that you know they're not speaking truth that was revealed but people are still flocking it's crazy it's crazy who is next then? somebody else who, who's next well, hey, Sister Shannon. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to, you know, say something real quick because I got to get ready to get out of here and go get Aaron. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for that uh, message, Tim. It was, yeah, man, that was that was heat. That was heat. Um, and uh, look, I would tell y'all from my, my experience, I say I've been about three years removed from the church building, about three years. Um, and uh, that was not, you know, that wasn't necessarily so much on purpose. It's just um, our car broke down like three years ago. We could go to church, y'all remember? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Even go. It, could go. Uh, so we would, you know, we'd go to church online and everything. And then when the car got back up, um, Brother Donovan's house became our church essentially. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh. It, was, <laughs> it became our church. And I'm telling you, like, you know, for me, it was so refreshing because I was around real believers. And I'm not saying like my church experience wasn't like it was it was bad. It wasn't. OK, but I went to a mega church. And so a mega church means mega organization means mega business. Hello. And um, at the end of the day, you know, like I said, when our car broke down, you know, it was just kind of like we were just forgotten in the wind. You know, it wasn't even though I was in leadership, even though. You know, we were regular tithers. I still tithe even afterward. But I say all of that to say this. Um, the, the, the passage you chose, Tim, you know, that I was, I, was, I was very interested in that passage because I heard a message by G. Craig Lewis a couple years ago, and he was talking about how the woman, you say she's saying the right things, right? But the problem is, is that she was, the, she was not speaking about the true and the living God. You understand what I'm saying? She wasn't speaking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He talked about how she was talking more so about Diana because they rose up this thing. It was about commerce. 
and they try to raise up um, the entire community against them because they were they were worshipers of this Greek goddess Diana. Mm. And so you messing with my money now. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got to put you in prison for that. So you can say all the right things. You got a lot of people that say, oh, well, you know, we, we you know, we're, we're believers. You hear a lot of people, oh, we're Christians and we're, we're teaching the truth. We're preaching the truth. A lot of evangelicals that could swore up and down that God told them that Trump was going to win. Um, but the reality is, is that the church doesn't have uh, um, an appetite for the truth anymore. That's the truth. That's the reality. They don't. They don't have an appetite for truth. They have an appetite for idolatry. And because there's so, such a hunger and an appetite for idolatry, I believe get, that God is judging the nations. He's dealing, he says first that judgment begins in the house of God. That's where it begins. So when we look at the fact that church has become so business, so commerce, so around every holiday, everything is about the promotion of idolatry, everything. And we get so engrossed into the traditions of men that we believe that that overrides the word of God. At the end of the day, people are not reading the scriptures for themselves. They're not going before the Holy Spirit to even check what a person is saying anymore to see whether it's true or not. They've gotten so 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 um, accustomed to hearing a message a particular kind of way. That's why as they're opening the church doors, they're saying, please, please give us what we're used to. Mm. But the truth is, is that Jesus did not call um, us in Matthew 28 to make, I put it this way, and then I'm gonna be quiet. He didn't call us to make churchgoers, okay? Mm. He didn't call us to make pew warmers. He didn't call us to do any of that. He said, make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Yahuwah, Son, Yahushua, Messiah, and Ruach HaKadosh. We've gotten away from that. First in Judea, then Samaria, then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discipleship is lost. It's gone. And because there is no hunger and thirst for righteousness, the church doesn't have an appetite for truth. That's why we're in the predicament that we're in today. So for me, calling yourself a Christian doesn't mean anything to me, period. Um, telling me you go to church every Sunday don't mean jack to me, period. Okay. What means something to a real believer is a real authentic walk every day. In the same way, Tim, you delivered a fiery message. There was a pastor many, many years ago that delivered a fiery message called sinners in the hand of an angry God. And that message what was, is, was, was needed in order to call the people to repentance. But when people hear a strong word today, they mm -hmm. automatically go in and they say, oh, this person's being divisive because they've given me a strong word. Amen. They, they want that milk. But at the end of the day, true, authentic, born again believers, they want to be cut to the core. Because the goal of every message that we hear, where do I need correction? So I appreciate your message because that was my goal. Where do I need correction? My correction, to be honest, I need to speak the truth in love. I speak the truth all day long, but I need to work more on speaking it in love. And I just want to thank you so much. Guys, I love y'all. Love y'all family. I got to get out of here, put these kiddos in the bed and go pick up my husband. Pray my strength on the road because these mountains are serious out here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Sister McCants, don't go yet. Don't. Uh, yes, Pastor Barry. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> Oh, this man, is no joke. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and one other thing I wanted to say is, um, you know, this is to us. I'm not talking about the church at large on Sunday. I'm talking to us. Mm. I'm talking to us. When I said, like, we're still up in the upper room worshiping and praying, that's me. Right. That's you. When, we're, when I said we're still in the upper room, we haven't left the upper room. We're, we're, we're like, let me stay in the upper room and, and just pray a little harder or worship a little more. But yeah, God has been saying, we got to get out, out, out. And that's the part I'm struggling with because I'm waiting for just to make sure, Lord, I'm endued with that power. So when I hit the street, I'm not in my flesh. I mean, I'm walking in the spirit. That's what I'm waiting for. So 
But at the same time, it, it's to us. You know, every one of us is dealing with uh, things that we've seen in church, are dealing with things we're seeing in the news, are dealing with things that we're seeing in our families. And the word right now to some, as I've heard over this past week, so, to some people say, oh, the word doesn't work in the real world. Mm. Well, mm. the word works. Yes, it the does. Word works. Yes, it does. So Amen. Amen. We don't apply it properly to our lives. That's the problem. Application. It's like when, when you get mad with your spouse, do you just curse her out and leave? Mm-hmm. Or, or, do, or, do you, or do you drop to your knees and you pray and seek the face of God about the situation? Mm. When, 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 when you out here and you can't stand your boss, do you go and just tell your boss what you think of him? Or do you drop to your knees and say, Lord, this is too heavy for me. I need you to deal with my boss. I need you to deal with Help me on me, this. Mm. See, the problem is, is that the world has gotten a taste of hypocrisy from the church. Right. That we don't want that. But it takes us to actually live out what we say. It's not easy. I remember Leonard, Leonard Ravenhill, he said it this way. Christianity has been tried, found difficult. And now it has been found wanting. Mm. Been tried and found difficult. It's too hard. Mm. It's too hard. And that's why we have pastors today who try to make it easy. And they don't preach hard messages anymore. Because, oh, it's too, it's too much for the people. They can't handle it. But you know what? It's us. It's us. We have to do it. We have to do it. The world has to still see that one person anointed with the Holy Ghost has the power to change lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Either, either the word is true yeah. or it's false. That's right. There go that second wave right there you was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> Bro, brother, Tim, <laughs> brother Tim and Sister McCants, if I could get a word in. Go ahead, go ahead, Brother Ben. Now, Brother Tim, you said that Christianity has been tried and, and has been found wanting. I submit to you that everyone that's tried and found the Lord is wanting, it's their scale that's off balance, not God's. Mm. Their scale is off balance, and that's why it's so hard. The Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. Mm. But if you confessed your, your sins and, and really repented of your sin before the Lord, you're no longer a transgressor. You're covered by now the, the mighty blood of Jesus and the Lord's spirit in you gives you power. That, that, that's what it said in St. Luke 10, power yeah. to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, if you believe that in yeah. your heart and this comes to Sister McCants, what you were speaking about, we're not talking about church goers. When we speak about discipleship, you know, when you say you go to the church or you hadn't gone to the church in three years before the car, I, and that, which I had, to, I had to applaud and laugh about that was a good one. But your body is the temple of the living God. Yes. The Holy Spirit in you makes you the church and Christ is the head of that church. And so though we may not physically be able to come into the house of worship where we all meet together and congregate, that's not the house the Lord is coming back for. He's coming back for us. That's right. If this earthly house or this tabernacle will be dissolved, we have another building at a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter is right there. And those ones the fear of the Lord, they're going to live the life that you're speaking about. This is not about whether I get to go to the to the meeting place every week or from there every time the doors open and stay two hours until it's closed, two hours after it's closed. None of that doesn't matter. When, you, when you're living right before God. So when we say, according to the scripture, that judgment will begin at the house of God, there are so many different levels to look at that. But the first thing people look at is he's going to come to that physical place. No, no, no. He's going to come to your house of this tabernacle and judge whether you have been living according to his word and the standard that he set. Because if, if you truly know him in the pardon of your sins, he's empowered you that, with that spirit, Brother Tim is speaking about. And therefore, there is no excuse Mm-hmm. Not to be able to live it. The question is not whether you were able to live it. Is why would you deny the Lord's power over your life if indeed you have that power? You want to live so that the Lord can use you. 
You want to purge yourself from everything that's unclean from this world so that God will look upon you as a vessel that is meant for his use. And God, believe me, is looking over this world to perform his word. He's looking for, the Bible says in, in, in St. John with the woman at the well, he said, the father seeks such as these to worship him. Which ones? The ones that worship him in spirit and in truth. It had nothing to do with the building. It's mm -hmm. all about the worship, the, the relationship that we have with the Lord. And I love what you said that you have to first make sure that you're speaking this truth in love because that's what that's the way the God comes God comes to us through us is by the love the love of that he's placed in us the love of God that is what compels this word this world and persuades men and women to become disciples is because of the love that they feel through us the lord uses us as his instruments the father said with love and kindness have i drawn you who do you think you're going to see that love and kindness from? But you and me. If we truly are the vessels of the Lord, that love and kindness that the Lord shall, that somebody's going to recognize that love through us from the things we say, from the things that we do. And it's all about what we do. Forget about what you say with your lips. I can tell my wife, I love her all day and night. But if I'm stepping around town, the devil is a liar. And so am I. Amen. And the Lord knows it. I know it. And so does she, whether she wants to acknowledge it or not. This is where we get into that thing about the itching ears. They heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear because they don't want to change. Hmm. That's, why that, that's why the weight is so heavy, Brother Tim. That's why it's so hard. When you don't want to change, guess what? You resist change. As, uh, you'll resist change till you die. But mm -hmm. when you want to be found acceptable and perfect in the eyes of, of the Lord, Father, whatever I have to endure, I prefer you cut me now than destroy me later. Mm. Cut my hand off, cut my mm. ear off, pluck my eye out. Whatever you have to do to get me to the place where I need to be in you, I ask you, Lord, have mercy upon me. Do what you have to do. I love the way David said when, he, when they came to him and said, what is it? What would you have the Lord to do? Pestilence? You remember the three things? He said, he said, let, let, let me leave it in the Lord's hands. Maybe the Lord will be merciful. We have to ask God, help me through this thing. God, show me mercy, O oh Father. If I can acknowledge my wrong, will you, will you forgive me? And does not the scripture tell us that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Help me, God, to hold on to your word. I'm holding you to that word. And not because I got power to hold you to anything, but because you promised it and you promised you would not lie. And I know you do not change. You cannot lie. Not that you would not. You cannot. Mm -hmm. Your word is truth. You are truth. And therefore a lie can't tarry in your sight. There's nothing, nothing shady about what God has spoken. Mm -hmm. So whether we look at the, the judgment of the church coming as the Lord looking at your earthly house or this tabernacle, because we are the church, or whether we look at the building that we are assembled to the worship. Either way, we better make sure when God comes for us that we're ready to go. I, this is the third time I said it today. When he calls, we're going to answer, and no one can deny it. No one can delay it. You can't postpone it. When God says it's your time, your house better be in order because we have nowhere else to go. I would never forget when I was a child, my pastor, old man, God rest his soul, he said, dispossessed and no place to go. He said, isn't that a sad thing? You get put out your house. He said, you ever see somebody get put out their house? All their possessions sitting on the curb. And people just walk by and wag their head. He said, what you going to do when the Lord comes and puts you out of this tabernacle? And your life is not standing up to the measure that God himself determined through Christ Jesus that we are to live to. You're going to be put out of this house. And hell is going to be your home. Mm. He said, you make up your own mind. You got to make the choice. You got to choose. That's why, why they don't preach fiery messages today. If I'm more interested in your money than I am in your soul, you, you ought to recognize that I'm a jack leg and hurry up and get out from around me. Mm. Because your soul means much more than what shall I get? What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Your, your soul is worth all the, all the possessions this world has to, to offer. What would it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? If you're not yet convinced of that, have mercy on you, Jesus. But please, let's not, not don't, don't pretend and play church. 
either be the church that God called you to be. Well, like another, another sermon he, my pastor preached when I was a child, he said, don't go to hell cramped up. Mm. What he meant by that was by pretending to be a, tr a Christian, but living all manner of evil behind closed doors, don't you know you're going to hell anyway? Why go to hell cramped up? Mm. If you're a wild dog and you feel like you can't help but sow your oats, get out there and do all you can because you're going to burn for it. Mm. You're going to burn for it. But if you want to be redeemed, if you want the Lord to set your house in order, you can call, you can call on him, confess your sins, and God will have mercy upon you. He'll straighten your life up. He'll change your ways. God bless you all. I love you. Thank you so much. I thank God for you. Praise God. Praise God. We we blown right past nine o'clock, but it's um it was for good reason. Really yes. good reason. So I just wanted to finish. I just wanted to finish for the other one. Right, 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 Yeah, but Tim, I just wanted to finish on on your your note because uh, I came in last, but um. I I I I get gravy. I get a resource because um you 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 touch on on, on Joshua nine and um that entire uh, chapter was repeatedly saying about um strong and courageous. It was referring to to Joshua to be strong and courageous throughout the, the entire chapter. So um. The key to that chapter, the response to that chapter is Second Chronicles seven fourteen, where it says, "If my people will will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then He will hear from heaven and forgive us our sins and heal our land." So we need to cry out for our country, for our people, to pray and to humble and to tune from their wicked ways because right now there is a spirit of wickedness that, that exists throughout America and the world. There is a trend of what that's going on right now and we have to pray to break that trend. And I believe that we could do it because we are strong men and we pray every morning that our prayers will be heard by a sincere God because it comes from a sincere heart. And every morning we pray and we believe that what we pray will, we will get justice and we'll get uh, um, some sort of consolation and, and we can be strong and courageous to continue to pray oh, as we continue to you. pray. So Brother Tim, thanks again. Sorry to be late, but bless you. Love you and love you Brother Donovan. Good yes, to hear you, Brother. Yes. Um, all right, all right. Hey, Pastor, thank you again for stopping by, sir. But um, would you please, would you please pronounce a benediction of, upon our night? Mm -hmm. On us all, praise Let's go before Heavenly Father. Eternal wise God, our Father. Lord, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We come, Almighty God, to bless you, to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord God, and for what you're doing. My Father, we realize and recognize that you are the God of all creation, that you are the sovereign God, that everything, Lord God, that lives, moves, and have its being owes it all unto you. And so, Lord, realize and we owe it all to you, not only what we have, what we've accomplished, but God, the life eternal that you promised us, even that, most certainly that, oh God, we owe it unto you. We ask you now, Lord God, look upon our hearts. Father God, you tell us to examine ourselves, but we don't, Lord God, we don't really want to justify ourselves. We want you to examine us. We want you to look in our hearts, oh, Father, and see if, what there's, if there's anything lacking, God. We want you to help us to see ourselves, Lord, even as you see us. So that, Father, that when you come back, when you send the Lord Jesus Christ back for your, for your church, Lord God, that we will not be found lacking, wanting, or left behind. But, Lord, in every way made perfect according to your word and your purpose and your will for our lives, that we all would be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, that so forever we will be with the Lord. Father, we ask you now to let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be found acceptable and pleasing in our sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. God bless you all. Amen and amen. 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 All right, family, good night.
Uh, we see you tomorrow night for prayer. Be blessed. Be blessed.